praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Almighty God will bless you. What to thank you for what you have been doing and what you have done so far. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to study at your feet. Thank you, Lord, for having mercy upon us. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving our sin. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a bright day to listen to the word of life that you have given to us. Almighty God, let your name be glorified. Mm-hmm. As we go into this Bible study, we should be digging deep service. Lord, let your name be lifted. Let your honor, your glory shine. And let a blessing be ours. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Good evening once again. I want to welcome you all to the Bible study service of the Redeemed Christian Church of God from the Lagos Province 59, Gethsemane Chapel Headquarters. Today, the 15th day of September 2020. And I want to appreciate our daddy and mommy in the Lord, Pastor Pastor Mrs. Funshua Yulua, the provincial pastor, for this opportunity to minister to us again. My name is Pastor Ola Rewaju Samuel. I'm the provincial youth pastor, LP59. Today we'll be talking on the topic that the Lord has given to us, titled Dominion. And I pray that God Almighty, we give us the dominion in every areas of our life. By the time we finish digging into this world of dominion, as God has planned it, even from the days of Adam and Eve, God Almighty will restore back our dominion in our marriages, in our home, in our families, in the name of Jesus. We'll be taking our Bible passage from the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. The Bible make me to understand from verse 26, and I read, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the heads, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he himself male and female. He created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. We can see here that from verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1, there was a simple agenda that God Almighty had in mind when he made that announcement in heaven and said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion and let them have dominion and i pray in the name of jesus the agenda that god have for you for you to have dominion in every facet of your life and you have lost it for one reason other through sin other through demonic influences other through parental carelessness god almighty will restore back your dominion in the mighty name of jesus if we look at Psalm 8, verse 6, Psalm 8, verse 6, the Bible says, Thou made it in to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Thou hast put all things under his feet. So we can even say that to have dominion means to have all things under your control. To have dominion can be said to have things under your leadership to have dominion means to have everything under your purview under your control day and night in your marriage to have dominion in your career to have dominion in your finances to have dominion 
physically for you to have dominion in your head to have dominion concerning your fruitfulness to have dominion god has put all things under the feet of man once anything is under your feet it means it is under your control anything under the feet of man is to be subdued by man according to genesis chapter 1 26 to 28 and that is why absolute dominion is referring to you to have absolute control so everything that god has put under your feet that the devil had made you to lose and you are now under the feet of such things god will reverse the reversible and you begin to have total and absolute control of everything that god has given to you to be under your feet in the name of jesus i pray that as you have been a prince riding on a horse for the beginning of your life and you have lost that position you are now the one leading the enemy riding on the horse god will reverse such situation and you take back your royalty you will take back your majesty you will take back your glory and you will possess back that possession in the name of jesus so what it is what does it mean to be to be dominant kingdom himself means god's king's domain when you say kingdom the word kingdom it means king's domain the domain can be referred to the area where the king has dominion and absolute control so if you have a king in lagos that means the domain of lagos is his control that is the area so you can't have a king in lagos going to rule in cardinal praise the lord so dominion also refers or can be said to refer to sovereign or supreme authority it means sovereign it comes from above it comes from god himself so it refers to sovereign or supreme authority to have dominion it means it comes from god if god does not give you the dominant power then you can't get it you see bible says can anything can a man receive anything except it's given from me from above the power to govern and to control is exhibited and is embedded in the power of dominion so when we talk about dominion we are referring at the power to direct the power to use the power to disp- uh, that's a disposal at your pleasure you use this power at your pleasure so as a christian one of the most beautiful features as a christian is that you have dominion as god's child so if you are in, having a christian you are in a, you are a christian and you are living a christian life day and night all your life one of the most beautiful feature that you should always think of having is the power of dominion because we are created to dominate that's why god said in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 he said now let's come and make man in our own image and let him dominate dominate over all all things all things if you look at the bible in the book of revelation chapter 1 and verse 6 the bible makes us to understand in the book of revelation chapter 1 verse 6 he says and has made us kings and priests unto god and his father to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever amen the purpose of this bible study is to make us to realize that god wants us to exercise dominion in every area of our life that's the key of this bible study to have dominion exercise it possess dominion then exercise it and use it at the disposal of your pleasure praise the lord so everywhere you have not been exercising dominion is it your marriage is it concerning your finances physically your spiritual life you are not having dominion god will restore such loss sits back to you in the name of jesus so 
if we are going to look at the secret of dominion, we have to know, realize that for us to enjoy the kind of life God has prepared for us, we need to understand what it takes to exercise and maintain dominion. So you, you cannot understand what God wants you to enjoy based on what he has prepared for you if you don't understand what it takes to have dominion to exercise dominion and to maintain it so today if you want to know the secrets of dominion it's for you to understand what god almighty has prepared for you as a christian so that you will not only have dominion you will exercise it and you maintain dominion so for you to have dominion to exercise dominion and to maintain dominion based on the plan that god had for you in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and the book of revelation chapter 1 verse 6 therefore you need to understand the essential ingredient of dominion the essential ingredient of dominion let's look at the essential ingredient of dominion number one for you to have dominion you must surrender your life to christ you must surrender your life to christ number two for you to have dominion you must abide within the almighty god through his only son jesus christ and remain under his authority as your lord and personal savior so you must abide with him and remain under his authority as your lord and personal savior let's look at second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. he makes us understand he said therefore if any man be in christ is a new creation all things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Hallelujah. So therefore, you must abide in him and remain under his authority. If you look at what the Bible even made us to understand, in the book of Job, chapter 22, verse 21, Job 22, verse 21, the Bible says, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace thereby good shall come unto thee so if you want to have dominion you must acquaint yourself with him and be at peace with god and good things shall come to you praise the lord number three how do you have dominion how do you have dominion you rule over your own spirit by subjecting it to the spirit of god so your own spirit is being ruled by the holy spirit of god the bible made us to understand in the book of proverbs chapter 16 chapter 16 and verse 32 proverbs chapter 16 verse 32 the bible said he that is slow to hunger is better than the mighty and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city so you rule your spirit on that by subjecting it to the holy spirit not that you rule your spirit on your own you subject it to the holy spirit the bible even made us understand more in the book of romans romans chapter 8 the bible said in romans chapter 8 verse 14 romans chapter 8 verse 14 the bible clearly encourages us it encourages us and made us to understand particularly that we need to subject our own spirit under the spirit of god he said for as many as led by the spirit of god said they 
are the sons of God. As many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Number four, how to get the essential ingredient for dominion. The essential ingredient for dominion. Number four, exercise your faith in Christ. Always exercise your faith in Christ. The Bible made us to understand in the book of Matthew. If you read the book of Matthew, chapter 17 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. The Bible made us to understand that. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your disbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible for you. If you look at Luke chapter 17, verse 6, Luke chapter 17, verse 6, the Bible stated clear for us as the Lord of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, Be that plucked up by the root. And that planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. So, if you want to have dominion, you must have faith like the mustard seed. Number five ingredients the essentials of dominion. The ingredients that are essential for the number one be fervent in your prayer. Be fervent in your prayer. Very important for us to be fervent in our prayer. No wonder, Apostle Paul. Made us understand the book of James, chapter 5, verse 17. James, chapter 5, verse 17. He said, Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that he might not train. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. You must be a man of prayer. If you are not a man of prayer, then you cannot dominate. You cannot dominate. In what ingredient again do we require? as a christian as a child of god number six ingredient is that as a child of god we must maintain the blood of jesus we must always recognize that we are saved by the blood of jesus the Bible may cause understand in revelation chapter 12 and verse 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives even unto death. And they love not their lives even unto death. So we should recognize the blood of Jesus. Once you recognize it, then you will dominate. Number seven, we should realize the power of God's words. The power of God's words. Every time we want, if you want to dominate, then you should recognize the power of of God's words. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. They, they are the power of God is powerful, it's quick, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and the discerner of the thought and intent of the earth. In addition, if you want to enjoy dominion, then you need to be one of, of the Christians that will always have the ingredients that are essential to dominate. Number eight, we need to have a consistent life of holiness as a non-negotiable to any other thing. So if you want to live a, domin a dominion life continuously, then you must have a consistent life of holiness, which is non-negotiable. You live a consistent life, non-negotiable. In your life, in your marriage, in your family, consistently, you don't bargain with holiness. You don't just become holy on Sundays alone. You don't just become holy 
on Fridays alone. You don't just become holy when you're in the perimeter of the church. You are consistently holy. And I pray in the name of Jesus, these ingredients that will make you to dominate, God will give you in the name of Jesus. For you to have dominion, to enjoy it, then you will be constantly praying to have it, exercising it, and maintain dominion. So you win with this understanding, the understanding of what it takes to have dominion, to exercise it, and maintain dominion. God will give it to you in the name of Jesus. So this ingredient that we have discussed about, for you not to surrender, for you to surrender your life to Christ, for you to abide and remain under His authority as your Lord and personal Savior, for you to rule your own spirit by subjecting it to the Holy Spirit and by exercising your faith in Christ, exercising your faith in Christ and by being fervent in prayer and by the blood of Jesus ruling you and the power of God's words are the essential ingredient for dominion and above all, to be consistently living a life of holiness and not negotiating it for any issue at all, for any power at all, for any reason at all. So brethren, let's talk about some areas of our life that need dominion. Because as a child of God, that we are created in this image and we are regenerated in Christ, it's expected that we exercise dominion in every aspect of our life. So let's look at four areas that we need to have dominion. And I pray as you listen, as you pray continually, as this world is going, all these four areas of your life, God will give you permanent dominion. You will not lose your dominating power in the mighty name of Jesus. Number one, you need spiritual dominion. You need spiritual dominion. I need spiritual dominion. And how do I know this? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 22. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 22 says, The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him as his own writer in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church over all things to be sure spiritual dominion you need spiritual dominion to move forward you need spiritual dominion to claim your domain you need spiritual dominion to have to exercise and maintain your domain with the dominion power you need spiritual dominion to be able to implement and exhibit the essential ingredient of dominion in your life the Bible makes us to understand, even in the book of Luke, chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. The Bible made us to understand. It says that, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. That is spiritual dominion. Snakes, scorpions, power of the enemy, and nothing. This is a spiritual dominion. It means that you rule even in terrains that are not comfortable. You rule even in domains that are beyond your territory. It means you are subjected only to the heavenly dominating forces backing you up in every area of your life when you have spiritual dominion then you take over all 
other areas of your life. I pray today that God that has given you this spiritual dominion, He will back you up in the morning, He will back you up in the afternoon, He will back you up in the evening. No power, no means shall hurt you. Snakes and scorpions of this world, power of the enemy cannot stop you because power is spiritual. Power is spiritual. Today, your spiritual dominion is coming back in the name of Jesus. Your spiritual dominion is coming back in the name of Jesus. Another area that you need to have dominion is the physical dominion. The physical dominion. The Bible makes us understand in the book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 2. Genesis chapter 9 verse 2. And God blessed, if you look at verse 1, and God blessed Noah and his children and said unto him, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the earth, upon all that move upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Into your hand they are delivered. That is physical dominion. Everything is delivered into your hand. As far as you are stepping on the surface of the earth, everything is delivered into your hand. Delivered into your hand. Nothing can hurt you. Nothing can can disgrace you. Nothing can embarrass you. If you look at Mark chapter 16 verse 18, if you look at Mark chapter 16 verse 18, they shall take up serpent, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. When you have physical dominion, you take possession. When you have physical dominion, you are not under the feet of anything, but all things are under your feet. When you have physical dominion, you reproduce, you replenish. When you have physical dominion, you increase and you enlarge. When you have physical dominion, you are lifted and you are not below. I pray in the name of Jesus that this area of your life, physical dominion, God will revisit you again, will support you, and will back you up with physical dominion in the name of Jesus. Number three, financial dominion. Financial dominion. I know this is an area that every Christian always wants to be relevant. And I pray that everywhere you have lost your financial dominion, because you are clamoring for your spiritual dominion to be restored and physical dominion, God will restore back to you your financial dominion in the name of Jesus. The Bible makes us to understand in the book of 2 Chronicles, if you look at Second Chronicles, chapter one, chapter one, and verses one to eleven to twelve, eleven to twelve, and God said to Solomon, after Solomon offered a wonderful sacrifice unto the Lord, and the Lord said to Solomon, because this was in thy hands, and thou hast no axe riches, wealth or honor, nor the life of thy enemies, neither yet had asked for long life, but had asked for wisdom and knowledge for thyself, thou hast may join my people over whom i have made the king wisdom and understanding is granted unto thee and i will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the king have had that have been before thee neither shall there be anyone after thee i pray in the name of jesus that god almighty that appeared to solomon that after he had offered a thousand burnt offering god appeared to solomon and he showed him great mercy just like he showed to his father god appeared to him established him favored him make him to multiply gave him financial dominion and the bible said even though he did not ask for it god gave him riches he gave him wealth he gave him honor like no other king before and after him will be like him i pray that your children they will be remembering you because of the extent of the wealth that God has deposited in your life in the name of Jesus. Because you have sorted after spiritual dominion, you are also seeking for physical dominion. God will grant you financial autonomy, financial strength, financial power 
in the mighty name of Jesus, you will move from level zero to level zero in the name of Jesus. If you look at the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 22, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7, Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7, the Bible made us to say, the rich ruled over the poor, and the borrower is the servant to the lender. The rich ruled over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender today and for the rest of your life you will be in the class of the rich and the wealthy and you will be a lender and borrowers will be your servant in the mighty name of jesus number four in what area should we be looking for dominion as a christian you should be looking for dominion political dominion political dominion if righteous people don't rule then the wicked would take over the terrain and when the wicked rule evil will be the currency brethren the bible made us understand when joseph had political dominion after he has sorted for spiritual dominion he refused to commit sin he refused to sleep with his master potiphar's wife but god did not only give him physical dominion or financial dominion God bless him with political dominion. And that's why I'm praying. As many of you that are looking for this platform to dominate, God will never withdraw his hand back from you in the name of Jesus. Look at Genesis chapter 41, verse 40 to 41. Genesis chapter 41, verse 40 to 41. The Bible said, Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word, shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than you that was pharaoh speaking unto joseph and in verse 41 and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have said thee over all the land of egypt political dominion what about daniel look at daniel daniel had political dominion he was outstanding he was different he stood out others may but i will not Daniel was in a class of his own with other Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel was outstanding. If you look at Daniel chapter 2 and verse 48, Daniel chapter 2 and verse 48, and the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts and made him rule over the whole province of Babylon and chiefs of the governor over all the wise men of Babylon. Brother, the Lord that made Daniel to take over the political platform in Babylon, God is there for you. That place, that state, that country, that job that you are having, you will take. So Daniel, he took over the political platform in Babylon. Let's look at Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. If you look at from verse 1 to 2, it pleased Darius. To set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the prince might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. And the king should have no damage. Brethren, I pray today that the devil that hates you so that you will not have dominion god will stop him before he stops you in the name of jesus because the devil hates to see you dominate as he took over the dominion power of adam in the garden of eden and the lord jesus christ brought it back who is the second adam god almighty will give you the grace to take back your dominion that you have lost in the name of jesus the dominion power that you have lost you are receiving back today in the name of jesus the devil is also looking for obstacles that will hinder you from exercising your dominion either your spiritual dominion your physical dominion your financial dominion your political dominion all these dominating power that god have deposited in you they begin to come out they begin to flourish they begin to come to display People will see you spiritually dominating, physically dominating, financially dominating, politically dominating 
in the name of Jesus. However, God has given you dominion over every power and antics of the wicked one. So every power that wants to subdue you, because God has put everything in this world under your feet, and therefore you must go and possess, you must go and dominate, you must go and conquer. In spiritual platform, you will conquer. Physical platform, you will conquer. Financial platform, you will conquer. Political platform, you will conquer. And from today on, you will be the head, and you will never be the tail in the name of Jesus. All the ingredients that you need to dominate, God will supply it to you. He will give it to you. You will be on top. You will rule over your enemy. The dominating power will not leave your head. Your glory will shine and the Lord God Almighty will strengthen you. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. You are here this morning and you want to give your life this evening. Rather, you want to give your life to Christ. And you'll be asking, oh, the reason why I've not been dominated is because I've not given my life to Christ. Yes, brother, except a man is born again, then he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if you're here, you want to give your life to Christ, just repeat this short prayer after me. Lord Jesus, mighty you are, gracious you are, Father, let me dominate. I want you in my life. I want you to be my new manager. I want to be under your new management, O oh Lord. Remove all my sin. Forgive me all my sin. Let your spirit dwell in me. Let me live a new life. Let me dominate spiritually. Let me dominate physically. Let me dominate politically. Let me dominate financially. Let there be a new lifting in me. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want to congratulate you for giving your life to Christ because from today you are under the new management, God's power, God's grace will flourish upon you. You will no longer be under the feet of the devil because God has made you to be the head and not the tail. God has made you to be an hero and not a zero. God has made you to be on top and not below. You will be lifted. The power of the living God will be upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to pray this prayer with me, everyone listening. Just shout and say, My Father, my Father. Say, My Father, my Father. Everywhere that I've lost my dominion power. Let the blood of Jesus restore it back to me right now. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. The Father, everywhere that I've lost my dominion power. Knowing or knowingly, through sin, through any power of sin, Lord, restore it back to me. Give me the second chance. Give me the grace, O oh Lord. Let me restore back all my dominated power in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us. Glory be to the name of the Lord for this opportunity. Join us again next week at the same time, 6 p.m., for our Bible studies. Till then, as we meet in the name of Jesus, Maranatha. Amen. Come on, hear me. Let's go. Come on, somebody, go.